And welcome back. Our next guest capitalizes on over 14 years of experience in the lodging industry to teach African-Americans how to become hotel investors as well as owners. Now with a passion for people, she makes hotel ownership real as well as relatable through educational training and programmatic resources, spotlighting each step in the hotel acquisition process, leaning into sustainable success strategies. Joining us now to discuss more is the founder of the Vaughn Group, Devon Reeves. And uh, Devon, thank you for being with us here on the Social Justice Forums. Thank you for having me. I so appreciate you, Darren. Yeah, well, I think your story is inspiring. We talk about really the pathway during African-American History Month to success. And it comes through hard work. And for yourself, uh, you are a young millennial hotel owner. And um, just share with us a little bit about your journey. Sure, absolutely. Um, again, my name is Davon Reeves. I am the president and founder of the Vaughn Group. We are a hotel consulting and hotel investment firm. And I've been in the industry actually over 15 years now. And I got my start off as a front desk agent at the Hyatt Regency Atlanta. And I moved over into corporate. Um, that's where I really learned about hotel ownership um, through asset management. And in 2017, I founded the Vaughn Group. And uh, my goal has always been to um, increase the percentage of African-American hotel owners and investors. And when we talk about the work that you've done, obviously going from the front desk to now ownership, not an easy task, but for you, it was, a, it was something that you wanted to accomplish. So talk to us about when you really found out for yourself, listen, I don't just want to do the front desk. I want to be the owner here. Oh, goodness. You know what? When I was around other people um, who were in my same age group and um, they were Indian and, and they were white. Some of them were white, some were Indian. Um, they inherited um, hotels. That was ownership was the norm in their family. And, you know, when I was a part of different organizations and they talked about that they own hotels and how they're going to expand their portfolio, I'm like, wait a minute, we're the same age. If you can do it, I can do it. And um, I didn't think it was possible until I started to change my surroundings and started to change my circle. Yeah. But talk to us for a minute, because the first thing somebody's going to say is when it comes to owning a hotel, that's a huge feat. Got to have a lot of capital. Um, how do I even how do I even cross the bar to do that? So talk to us about how you've helped people to actually understand the reality that you can actually invest in hotels and be owners. Um, that's a great question. Um, a lot of people don't realize the, the, the options that are available. Um, to, to, to use to invest. Uh, some folks, uh, including my investors, they use um, their life insurance, they use retirement, some different ways and different vehicles that a lot of people don't uh, know. And I didn't even know in the beginning when I got off of my journey. And so I always recommend for folks to talk to their financial advisors um, or, or, or really um, take a look at their personal financial statement to see if they can actually get into it and start networking um, getting into the rooms and getting to the groups with hotel investors and hotel owners. Um, but the first thing before you even get there, you have to get, you have to talk about mindset, right? Because who talks about hotel ownership and investing at hotels at the dinner table? I mean, when I was growing up, that was not a conversation at the dinner right. table. I don't know about you, Darren. I don't know if y'all was talking about, you know what, we, we going to buy this hotel down the street so we can have our family reunion. That's just not what was discussed. And so the first thing that I always say is, we have to wrap our brain around owning hotels, right? It's February is Black History Month. I always think Black History Month should be every day. Um, but we were African-Americans. We were the original Airbnbs. Owning hotels is not new to our community, right? Remember the Green Book, you know, during right. the civil rights movement, even prior to the civil rights movement, we only could stay at Black-owned hotels. So owning hotels is new, right? Um, it was just a decline once integration happened and a lot of the black owned hotels um, were pretty much decimated or closed down because once the businesses were integrated, we start going to other um, hotels outside of our culture. And so all I'm doing is just bringing back something. I'm not, I'm not even reinventing the wheel, really. This is something that we've been doing for, for close to 200 years now. Um, it's just creating that mindset and making it attainable and making that reality that is something that we can do to pass generational wealth to our families. Well, you're doing it. And not only are you doing it, you're inspiring others to do it. Uh, presently right now, you're the youngest black woman to- I'm uh, not. 
I'm not anymore. No. I've been dethroned. Yeah, one of my one of my she has one of my mentees actually. She she. Well, that's dethroned. good. You gonna be dethroned, but go ahead. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm dethroned. It's okay. It's okay. She's she's thirty. She got me. I, I remember when she was about to close on her hotel. I said, "You got to take my spot. Congratulations." <laughs> Well, listen, you were the you were the first, so we got to give you props there. But but what, did, what what does that mean for you to be able to break that ceiling? Because we know that these are ceilings that look highly unattainable. Yeah. Uh, they don't look like us, no, but yet crazy. still to be an African American, a woman, a millennial, and then to be able to do that, what was that like for you being able to you know get the keys and sign the deed and say, listen, I'm the owner here. It was a great feeling. It took a it took a while for me to like to register and like hit you know, that like this, this happened. I, Cause I guess I was so much in the weeds and mm-hmm. you know, doing the work and getting it done that I just didn't even wake up and really appreciate the moment. Um, but it was when it's actually, it happens when I meet the employees of the hotels and I get to see firsthand the impact of the acquisition, how it's made on their life and how, you know, instead of creating a, a job, now I'm creating a career you know, because we're able to come in and stabilize and put systems in place where it allows them to grow and take their career to the next level and take their family to the next level. So something like that, it's it's rewarding, it's fulfilling um, throughout the platform that I've created when I've encountered so many people, so many Black people, so many women and children and college students and just the encouragement and how even people who even worked in the hotel industry, you know, my, my mentors, the people who stay, who the shoulders who I stand on and they never made it, they never made it to the hotel ownership step. Um, the fact that they're congratulating me and the fact that they're, they, they feel like that they can do it now. Um, that's probably the best feeling. That's an indescribable feeling. It's a humble feeling. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful that uh, God has placed this purpose. I, I don't say find your passion now, and I say find your purpose. And, and so I realized that this is my purpose um, to help people expand their mind and, and diversify their real estate portfolio with hotels. Yeah. Well, David, I didn't want to pass over the fact that we were joking, but when we talked about the fact you're not the youngest anymore, you said there's somebody that's 30, but this is somebody that you actually mentored. And I want to, I want to, I want to lean into that for a minute, because in addition to getting yourself there, you have consistently worked to help people, to put people on, to be able to get to a path, to get to a path of ownership. So talk to us about this particular young lady, talk to us about the mentorship program that you have to help people, no matter what age you are, to actually yeah. say, if this is what you want to do, you can do it. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Kendra Plummer. Uh, I'm just so proud of her. She she did this deal. She she did it on her own, own and um, she is the youngest. Her company is the least capital. Um, and she is the uh, the youngest uh, to date uh, to co-own uh, or to be a free uh, franchisee of a um, major uh, hotel brand. So uh, shout out to her. She actually, she actually has been in the hospitality industry. Um, her side comes, her background comes from um, underwriting deals. So it just made sense that her goal is not only is her hotel black owned, is also black managed, which is very rare. Uh, she has a, a management company, a third party management company that comes in and uh, manage the day to day operations. So. Um, so shout out to Damon Smith. He's another black um, male hotel owner. He's owner. That, he's older than me, but he manages the day to day operations. And uh, another uh, client of mine. She actually just made some news. Um, she is the first um, African American period and African American woman that's actually going to um, that's opening a container hotel. So mm. she's starting her own own brand, and so seeing. Uh, people like that, um, uh, you know, seeing that they're creating their own, creating their own path and creating their own wealth and opportunities for others is it's amazing. And I'm, I'm glad that I can be a part of it, even if it's just a little bit or even if I just inspire somebody. Well, I think you are doing some inspiration, a whole lot of inspiration, so much so that I know that you're putting all your career and, and how to really do this into a book. And that book should be coming out next month sometime. Yes, it should be coming out next month. Um, it's called, it's really, you know, take, you know, know the name of it already, but it's how to buy a hotel, real simple, roadmap to hotel ownership. Um, so I talk about the different uh, different pathways to hotel ownership. 
Um, also, what I'm doing with the pre-order experience, um, I'm having live webinars for the folks who actually pre-ordered the book. And so recently, uh, the, the first webinar was with a good friend of mine who's another Black female hotel owner. Her name is Shannon Steele. Not only does she own a hotel, she also owns a bank. Um, so she, we had a discussion and she shared her story, how she got into the hotel ownership world. I uh, had a conversation with Andre Albert and he's a REIT expert because a lot of folks don't realize that you can actually invest in lodging REITs, which is a way of investing in hotels. And then Mike Ely, who's uh, my business partner on the hotels, so I partnered with, he's going to talk about and share his secrets, how he uh, analyzes hotel deals. So it's not even just, uh, I'm big on education, I'm big on knowledge. So it's creating that experience and, and seeing the different ways and the creative ways and pathways to get to hotel ownership. So what is next for you? I mean, you got the book out, you got your ownership portfolio that you're building and, and, and building out. What's next on, what's next on your path? I had a big project and I can't wait to share. Ah, it's, huge. it's huge. I'm telling huge. you, it's huge. And you don't even see it coming. When you, really? when, when you see it, you're going to be like, oh, wait, what? Yeah. I'll be like, it, it, I'll it be like she kind of I told she kind of talked about it here, but she didn't give me no exclusive. She didn't give me no Oprah, but it's all right. She let us know that we, it was we, coming. We, we, we just got to do a redo for the exclusive. That's all. Okay, that's good. We can do that. I, listen, yeah. open platform here. You, you are more than welcome to come back and let me know because we definitely want to let uh, our people know. But, I, but let us know this, though, honestly. Um, what are some of the biggest obstacles that you faced in doing this? Because we see the success. We see the glory. But we really don't know always the story. So what were some of the biggest challenges that you actually faced? Oh my gosh, the biggest challenges. Well, for one, for one of my biggest regrets probably is that I did not go to school for commercial real estate. Um, so I had to learn from scratch, understanding the financial aspects of commercial real estate and um, hotels. So that was a hurdle. So that was, that, that was a learning curve. So it took me a, a little while to kind of understand that process and understanding the financing part. Um, another hurdle was I got told a lot of no's because I was young. I'm not even really because I was black. It was some just because I was young. Um, and uh, I had to, once I believed in myself and once I told myself yes, and I didn't listen to the no's and I just kept going. And I just overcame that hurdle and I became laser focused. I mean, laser focused. Uh, you can ask my friends and family if we if you weren't gonna help me get to my hotel, it was nothing to talk about. I was truly <laughs> focused, and um, because one of my biggest regrets is that I told my grandmother that I was gonna buy a hotel, and I never got a chance to. She never got a chance to check into my hotel, and so when she passed, it just dawned on me, and I said I have to buy a hotel before February six, and that was that's her birthday. And I didn't stop and we closed on, we closed uh, November, November 1st, 2020. Wow. So that was before her birthday. Yep. So what was that feeling like for you? Because to get, make that promise, to fulfill that promise, what's that like for you? Um, well, I got an old school grandma. So I heard her voice and she said about time. So that feeling, it was <laughs> a humble... <laughs> <laughs> right. She she, she 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 was still being humbling on the other side. Right, um, right, right. But it was a it was a great feeling and I understood what she meant by I didn't understand what she meant about generational wealth until after she passed until after my son was born. Mm -hmm. You know, cuz she always told me it's best to keep a paid off house in the family so somebody always have a place to stay. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna take it to the next level and make sure that I have at least one paid off hotel in a family. So that way, not only will somebody always have a place to stay, but somebody always will have a place for income coming in as well as creating jobs for family members. That's awesome. That's an awesome testimony. And to do this and to be a millennial, what advice do you give? I mean, to somebody out there that's watching, and, you know, because the hardest thing sometimes is just getting started. I think yeah. when you think about do it, when you think about putting it together and doing what you do, um, a lot of people will say, listen, I don't have this. I don't have that. They'll talk just about do what it. they don't have just, versus just do what it. they do have. Just do it. I mean, just just do it. I've realized. I mean, that's what happened with me. I just did it. it just you'll figure it out along the way. You're going to make a mistake. I right. realized the folks that stopped them, there weren't. It has to be just right. It, the timing is right. Me. 
I just do it, right? Um, it, it does help. The more and more you just do it, the more and more you start planning. <laughs> so I do plan more now, but the it, you, just ha- you just have to do it. There's no way around it. I know people who've been telling me about their dreams 10 years ago. They're still telling me about it, you know? And I'm yeah. like, oh, okay, great. You know, um, <laughs> it, you know, it's just at this right. point, it's like, okay. Everybody's got a dream. Everybody got a dream, but you know, you got to, you know, like my dad used to say, dreams don't pay bills. So, you know, you got to, uh, you, 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 just, you just have to do it. And so um, that's that. So my my recommendation and my advice for anyone is to just do it and follow your purpose. Um, it's a lot going on about, you know, money and quick money and entrepreneurship. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Stay in your lane. You know, I'd like to use this this analogy, your story, you know, how cars, when you move over to the left and right, you start hitting other folks. But when you stay in your lane, you get to your destination. You get to your destination safely. And so that's the main goal, right? So don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Um, Just stay true to yourself. Stay focused and follow your purpose. The money will come. After a while. It'll come. It really would. When people used to tell me that, I didn't believe it. And I was like, oh my God. There it is. And here it is coming, coming, coming. So (laughs) I want to thank you for being with us here on the Social Justice Forum. Again, listen, when I talk about inspiration, inspiration and somebody that we can learn from. And when you think that you can't get it done, here's an inspiring story of somebody who's getting it done and helping others to do it. So please uh, check out her information that you have and that you see on our social media platforms and then also right here on this show. 